before I start, please close your eyes, everyone. Close your eyes. I can catch you if you're opening your eyes. <laughs> Imagine yourself when you were five or six years old. You're living in a hut. You're not living in Germany where it's cold or it's windy. You're living in a hut. Five, six, or five or six years old, you wake up in the morning the first thing that you put your legs on the floor it is so painful and you realize there's blisters on your leg and it bleeds a bit and you touch your lips and you feel this liquid and, it, and you have a look at it and it's blood your lips are cracked open because it's so hot It's about 50 degrees Celsius out there. You wake up, you meet your mom out there, and she tells you to go and collect water. And you pick up the jerry can or a bottle, an empty bottle, and you walk. You start walking. You're six years old, you're going through some bushes. Some of them are higher than you. You go in, you hear snakes, you hear animals. You walk and walk and walk for the next two hours. You come to a spot, a small lake. Just imagine that you're six, five or six years old again. You come to a lake and you bend down and you drink water from that lake. And you realize that lake is brown in color. There's a dead animal a hundred meters away who has flies on it. And you have another child over there who is defecating by the river as well. And you're drinking the same water that the child is defecating. You pick up your jerry can, you fill it up with water, and you walk back. You're five or six years old and you're pulling the jerry can as you walk. And you walk and it's so heavy. Your body is so weak that you can't even pull it. You take breaks and by the time you reach home, it's already two in the afternoon. Most of the kids out there are going to school, but every day you're collecting water. You come back to home, you realize your stomach aches. And now, you go to the bathroom, which definitely is not a bathroom, but it's an open space, and you have diarrhea six times a day sometimes. And you're five or six years old, and your body is so weak. I just want you to open up your eyes now. And I just want to share with you that this kid, six year old, passed away, the exact scenario that i just given you. And this kid, it's just one hour away from a city center in Malaysia. It still gives me goosebumps every time I tell you this story. I started off my journey because of this kid. Her name is Mira. I went to a village in 2014, in June 2014, and I met with the family. The family told me that she was having diarrhea about six times a day. I built a system around it, a water system, and I went back to the village Two weeks before I delivered a water system to them, Mira passed away. So the entire thing that you have imagined is a real story went through by this kid. Nearly a billion people don't have access to clean and safe drinking water. Since I've spoken, since the whole day you were here, every 20 seconds around the world, a child dies because of clean and safe drinking water. A show of hand, which of these glass would you choose on the right? Who would choose the glass on the right? Most definitely everyone. I'll come back to you with the answer of this question in a bit. Since our work for the past one and a half years, we have brought in water to about 3,900 families for the past 18 months. We have saved about 200 kids 
And in Asia, whereby if a kid passes the age of five years old, it's, it's like winning a lottery. Out of ten kids, only three kids get to pass after the age of five years old. Seven kids passes away. And most of the time, after bringing in safe and clean drinking water, because of this, parents don't have to spend money on hospitals. They spend on education of the kids. So we have helped family grow in the past. <coughs> Since we started off, we have won well, as one of the fastest growing social enterprise around the world out of more than 30 countries. We won an award in Chicago last year. So coming back to the question again, <coughs> guess which glass that the villager chose after working for 18 months? The glass that the villager chose was the grey glass, the glass that was cloudy and murky. And to them, it's because they have never seen a glass of clear water in their life. And to them, this was dirty. So it was a matter of perception. So what we realized after 18 months was actually that safe water is a necessity, but clear water, that's a luxury. And after 18 months, we spending a couple of hundreds of thousands of dollars researching about this and deploying systems, we realized that, hey, you know, it's not, it's not about bringing clear water, but it's making sure it's safe. This is our first prototype, and this is the exact prototype we also presented to President Obama about in 2015, and pre after presenting to him after 15 minutes, the entire system broke down. <laughs> so, so we were lucky to actually not breaking down during the presentation. And uh, we have received an award from uh, Stanford, Harvard, and a couple of, and also we got an award from NASA as well as an innovation that impacts a billion lives. <coughs> and this is our innovation at the moment. As you can see, the previous product was actually the height somewhere around here. It was quite bulky. And this is our current innovation after one and a half years old. It actually, what you do is you have sunlight, which charges the device, and then you have salt, which you premix it with water, you have brine solution, and you put it in, and through electrolysis, you have chlorine, which makes the water safe. So you just put in chlorine, depending on how big the jerry can is, if it's one liter, five liter, 10, or 20, and you pour it into the water, the can, and you wait it overnight, and it's safe to drink the next day. And this costs only about 100 US dollars, and it can sterilize up to 60,000 liters of water. And we think that's a great deal. And it's tough, and it's really small. It fits into my pocket. So if you see, so this is depending on the, on the volume of water that you have. And it's really small, and you can drop it, it doesn't break. The grand vision of the company is actually is bigger than water. It's about lifting a human above the poverty line. Because water is the first step, and then you have sanitation, and you have health, education. You can't provide education to a sick child. But you've got to solve the necessity of bringing in right health. The family has to be so economically empowered because if they don't have money, these children are forced to work in the fields as well. My question to all of you guys here today is there's a lot of help that is needed on this part of the world, which is in developing countries. We are very lucky to be born in such a privileged state. But sometimes you don't even realize, or it is a matter of ignorance whether we would, do we really want to do something about the other people in the world? Or do we want to always stay in this part and say, that's not my problem? Because I think as global citizens, everyone plays a part in each other's lives. And I think that's, that's the only thing that I can pass it on to you, pass on the baton to you is, do you want to really do something and move this journey? Or do you want to say, hey, you know, I had an amazing talk, it was an amazing Friday, but I'll go back and think about it and 
that's it. How do I make my life much more meaningful and make sure that I can contribute in some ways to other people in other parts of the world? Thank you very much.